Hi, it's the 15th of October. Um, the lovely bright day outside, which is why I've had to pull the curtains to. Uh, but the temperatures have dropped. So it's scarf time again. So 15th of October. And I've read, um, I've actually read one, two, three, four. I've read eight books plus the two uh, that I reread from the bookers. Uh, the book of shortlist, um, study for obedience and if I survive you, but I've got other videos of those, so I'm not going to talk about them this time. I started off with um, Annette Galliard that comes out on the 26th of this month. And it's Sophie Anderson's new one, The Snow Girl. And this is uh, for 8 to 12s. And it's magical and wintry, a perfect book for sitting with uh, a, a child together in front of a cosy fire. It's about friendship and how when you've got a friend, you're never alone. And when you've got friends, you can do anything. Um, Tasha and her parents have moved to live with her granddad. And because he can't cope with the farm anymore. And Tasha is frightened to make friends after something that happened where she lived before. Um, so her and her granddad build a snow girl. And she makes a wish and this snow girl comes to life. And every night Tasha goes out with Aliana, the snow girl, for adventures. And the thing is, with Aliana, winter is staying it's not going and um, Tasha realises that as soon as spring comes so will Aliana but because winter is going on so long her fa grandfather's health is deteriorating so it's all to do with the relationships between Tasha and Aliana and the relationship between Tasha and her granddad is beautiful. It really is. It's lovely, wintry magic in that one. The next one I read was another Net Galliard. It comes out again on the 26th of October. And it's Janice Hallett's new one. The Christmas Appeal. And it's all set in pantomime season. Um, I don't know whether US have, um, uh, US other countries have pantomimes, but Britain, in Britain, pantomime is the thing for winter. And we're back with the fairway players who we met in the appeal. And they're getting ready to do their pantomime. And once again, Janice Hallett has moves the plot through with emails and texts and round robins. And you find that there's very little Christmas spirit. In fact, the character of Celia, her emails are so spiteful and snarky you know it's a wonder there's not a pile of bodies with all the backstabbing but um as it says in the blurb uh santa dies and you had to wait for a while for santa to die but the build-up is lovely um the pantomime they're wanting to put on is jack and the beanstalk using a 1978 script so there is this was before woke and political correctness so everything is totally unpolitically correct um and it's it's gorgeous i i loved it it's a lovely wintry it's a lovely Christmassy feel because you've got pantomime and you've got these spiteful characters and you've got this mystery as well. And the beanstalk itself is almost another character. So I enjoyed that one. Then I moved on to this one, one of my charity shop finds, The Keeper of Stories by Sally Page. And Janice is married to Mike, who is someone who can't keep a job, who um takes her for granted um he's a taker he never gives he said he's take 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 even when he makes Janice a cup of coffee it's the coffee how he likes it not how she likes it if you see what I mean um she collects stories and for her her stories are a lifeline because in her marriage she's very isolated her son lives away from home um 
then she comes to have a new client, Mrs. B, uh, a feisty 92 year old. And Javis almost meets her match because Mrs. B can tell stories just as well as Janice. And it's the story of their friendship and how Mrs. B gives Janice time to consider her life. Um, you've also got other super characters in here. You've got an opera singer, you've got a dog, you've got a bus driver. And it's one of those nice, charming, feel-good books. Then what did I move on to? I moved, oh yes, Audible. I moved on to Audible and um, I, I listened to, excuse me, I listened to Open Water by Kella Pazuma Nelson. And this was his debut novel that won the Booker Prize. Not the Booker Prize, the Costa First Award novel, award. And it's a story about what it's like to be a black man in um, London where you've got racism even in the police because he talks about times when he's been pulled over for the stop and search purely because of his colour. Um, and there's also a love story in this. Um, the narrator in this has got no name. The girl he meets has got no name. But they, they meet um, when the, and in the beginning she is dating his best friend, but eventually they get together. But she's a student in London, so it's a long-term relationship. And it's a relationship where he's, it's a relationship that you're never sure whether it's going to work because he's got so much, he's traumatised as well by um, an event that he witnessed. With um, this writer, you've got lyrical writing. Um, it's a rhythmical, it's gorgeous writing. Uh, the two books, I think I preferred Small Worlds. I prefer the second one because I, I like the narrator more than I did the narrator in this one, if you see what I mean. Um, but listening to um, the author read his own works, he's got a gorgeous voice to, to listen to. Then I moved on to John Boyne's new one that comes out on, I didn't didn't say when it comes out. I think it's it's beginning of November, I think this one is. Um, and it's called Water, and it was on uh, Net Galley Arc again. And you've got Vanessa Garvin, who has left Dublin for this little island off Galway. She left uh, Dublin because her husband was jailed, and the social media made her complicit in his crimes. When she gets to the island, she shaves her head, she changes her name, and she hopes that because the island is remote and Wi-Fi is so intermittent, she'll be able to be anonymous. And she tries to have as little contact as possible with the, the islanders, which but it never works because the islanders want to get to know her. And it's a story of her coming to terms with what went on and whether she had a part in it or not. And it's a short novel and I loved it. I mean, I love all of John Boyne's works. That, that it, it very rarely misses for me. So that was uh, well worthwhile. Then I listened to another one on Audible. And this was a very short one. It was Notes on Grief by Chimanda Ngozi Ndichie. And it's all about the pain and loss after her father's death. And she expresses her thoughts and the thoughts that I can recognise because he took me back to when my own father died. But our journeys for, through grief were very different because she had the rage and the anger because her father was taken from her suddenly. Where for me, because my father was 95, there was a sad acceptance, if you see what I mean. But what comes through is the love and respect she has for her father. And you get to know her father through her memoir. And a superman he seems to be. Then I moved on to this one. Um, I'd read Cuddy by Benjamin Myers, but I hadn't read any others, so I picked up The Perfect Golden Circle. Again, another short read, about 240 pages. And it is full of friendship and art and the countryside. It's set in the night, late 1980s, and you've got two characters, Redstone, and sorry, Redbone and Culvert. Redbone is um, like an aged hippie 
and Calvert is an ex-services who's traumatised after the Falcons. And these two together, they create crop circles. They go out under cover of darkness and create crop circles. And it's a story of friendship and Oh, these two characters you want their story to go on and on and on but as this is set in the summer summer comes to an end the book comes to an end i loved her then i moved on to this one his and hers by mike gale um his mike gale is one of my go-to authors for nice cozy reads um and this one is about jim and allison and the observations that he puts into his books, you can recognise everything in his books. It's We meet them first in 2003 when they meet after uh, uh, several years apart, uh, for the first time after several years apart. And then you go back to their first meeting in 1989 when they were students and you track their through alternate perspectives you see their first dates meeting the parents getting married splitting up and it is brilliant observational writing you can recognize everything and it was set um the student life was set in birmingham which is where i went to university so i could recognize lots of the places that they were talking about he is excellent at making mundane activities interesting and the two characters you love them you, you are. There's romance and humour and it was gorgeous. And I think, yep, yeah, that was the, um, those were my eight for the um, first half of the year. And that um, First half of the year, first half of October. And I had a really good time um, reading those. Um, I had two five stars, Notes on Grief and Perfect Circle. Oh, um, but I'm going to choose this one because of the the beauty of it and the fact that these two men you can just sit and listen to their interactions all the time and the fact that they're creating these crop circles not for their own gain but just to create beauty and there is a lovely feel to this I adored this one, absolutely. So this, so far, this is my book of October. So we'll see what the second half of October brings. So I'll leave you now. Happy reading. Take care.